So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple and very easy display piece. The best part about making this is it's very easy to do. All you need is scrap just laying around. This is something you can do at home. But before we begin, I just have a few things I have to say. First, this can be very dangerous. Do not do this at home unless you're 18 years or older and have skills with these tools. If you're under the age of 18, do not do this at home. This can be very dangerous. If you do make any of my weapons that you see, make sure you check your local laws and make sure it's legal to own these weapons. And these weapons are for display only. Do not in any way use them in any physical fight whatsoever. If you're making it, you're making it because you want to display it. If you're watching this video, you're watching it because you want to learn how to make it or because you want to be entertained so for that matter, we can now begin. Hey guys, it's me, your friend John. I'm going to be showing you today how to make a ball club or a mace or a knob carrier. It's not carrier, it's a... Uh, very hard to pronounce this word. It's spelled knob and then K-I-E-R-I-E. -E. Uh, please bear with me. I couldn't figure out how to pronounce this word and I couldn't find how to pronounce it when I searched online, so please forgive me for mispronouncing it. But it's gonna be either a ball mace, or a wood ball club, or a mace, whatever one you wanna call it. So the first step you're gonna want is you're gonna want the right tool. So first you're gonna want the ball. This is actually a uh, crochet ball, or yeah, I think it's pronounced crochet. And you're also gonna want a handle, mainly a round handle, you know, kind of round. You could use other options, like this is a, standard uh, hammer handle but as you can see it's a little oval and if you drill a hole in this a hole in a hole goes in pretty well you know I got these drill bits as you can see these drill bits kind of match up I drill a hole in here with this it will match very nicely but if I drill a hole and use this guy might not fit too well and that's not going to be good so you can use a hammer handle but it's really hard to say how well it will work so that's why i'm recommending you something round like this this is you can basically get these anywhere broom handle or you go to a hardware store and look for handles or something but broom handles work pretty well You can also use other things as well. It doesn't have to be a ball. This is just a wood apple and it's pretty hard. And again, you drill a hole in this wood apple, you can put this in there and you got yourself a weapon. Or, and, oh, here it is. Uh, it's this bad boy, big piece of wood. So you can clearly see a lot thicker. You can cut a piece off right here stick it on here or you can use a baseball bat and do the exact same thing get a baseball bat and just cut it and just stick it on i mean not the whole bat the top of the bat part where you would you would hit the ball so we're going to start with the first step and we're going to drill a hole in it and you want to drill it where it's nice and center I'm trying to see where the center is i marked the center right here it's a little hard to see but you can see i drew an arrow and there's a big dot right there this is the center that's where you're going to want to drill i'm going to use a smaller drill bit just as like a guiding and then i'll use the bigger one just to make sure that everything's straight and to help me stay on track so let's begin drilling You also want to make sure that when you're drilling, you're not doing it crooked. You don't want it to be crooked. You want it to be straight. So every once in a while, just make sure that you're not leaning towards one side or another. You want to make sure that you're going in straightly. And I can actually see that I'm a little off. That's why I'm using the smaller one. It's a very easy fix. I just keep going in and out and hopefully it will become straight. And you just keep doing that over and over and over again with the drill bit. Once you have your hole at the proper deep depthness of what you want it, you're going to want to go a little bit bigger. I mean, yeah, there are some people that will just 
jump right to the big one, but like I said, I'm going little by little, so I don't make any mistakes. But it's optional. You can just go straight to big one. Or I got stabbed a little. He's one of these guys. But for me personally, I find that it helps that you go little by little because you get a more straight hole. It's not going to be a little crooked. If you make a mistake, much easier to fix a small hole than it is a final big hole. So that's why I recommend going little by little. And then again, go up a size. And then you can do the final, whatever which one you want to use. So, now I'm going to continue making my hole a little bit bigger. Okay. Ah, I keep getting stuck. So maybe this drill bit's not good. Let's try a new one. There we go. Now, now it's time to make the hole as big as possible. And well, anytime I'm involved, a small hole always gets bigger. Yeah, that's what she said. Why not? I got an idea. All right, it's a little difficult to get this in, so I'm gonna. I'm going to use one of these guys. I don't know the name of this type of drill bit. Uh, I know it's for drilling metal, but for me personally, I do find that it helps going into wood. So I'm going to use this because this is actually really hard for me. So take your drill bit, this one, this type, and I'm going to try drilling in it. And hopefully that will make it easier for me to get the big one in. going in a lot easier but I'm using a lot of force to get in it's not going in very easily it's, you gotta really push it in <sighs> not even close Jesus Christ I got a lot of drilling to do all right so I was able to get it in with this. So, you wanna know something? This guy is a little hot. This really did help me, and I really do. If you're gonna make a type of weapon like this, a ball club or a mace or, uh, what was that stupid thing called again? I gotta look it up. Where was it? Ball carrier? It's not, like I said, it's not carrier, it's spelled K I E R I E. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the name. Please don't go after me for that. I'm doing my best. But like I said, this, this really does help. And I'm almost done actually. Oops. I'm almost done actually getting this in. It's not easy. This is hardwood and hardwood is really hard to drill through. But you want hardwood because this is what's going to be hitting the guy's head or a zombie or animal. Whatever you're going to use this on. This is really strong hardwood. And softwood, well... I recommend hardwood for any impact points, I'll say. So I'm going to finish up drilling this in. Make sure you, every now and then, you're going to get a pile of wood. Like you'll get like this stuff will be like in there, like that. So every once in a while, make sure you dump it so it doesn't clog up. Pretty good. And now let's see how it fits. It actually fits very, very nicely, actually. I mean, 
it's not even anchored in or glued in or anything and it feels like it's not going anywhere uh, I think oh there we go but you're gonna see why I said round and not oval it don't fit I mean what you could do if you do get a handle like this Technically, you can sand it down around here and make it more round. You can take a hand file and just file, file, file the top where the ball will go in and make it round. But that's a lot of work. Or you could use the belt sander. There's a lot of dish different options you can use, but that's why I'm recommending round. But if you only have a hammer handle that's oval, not the end of the world. You can just stand right here and make it more round so it does fit in. All right, so next step is optional. You do not have to do this step, but I'm gonna do it because I want it to be a little, uh, I like guess more intimidating or cool. You can see I drew a bunch of little dots on here and these dots, I'm gonna drill teeny little holes and I'm gonna put these little nails on it. So basically, it'll have these little impact points, these little hard impact points all along it. But this is something I do not recommend doing. It's very, very hard to uh, not draw dots. Not hard to draw dots. Anyone can draw dots. But to make it precision, to make sure that you're going to be on center and there's no rogue nail that's off center. You want to make sure everything's center. And measuring this, you know, you have to kind of see. This is a good angle, but you can kind of see how I measured it and it's very difficult to measure something and make it symmetrical when it's round and you're trying to add, where did I put that nail? Here it is, the nail. It's very, very hard to put a bunch of nails in, so that's why I'm saying optional. You do not have to do this, just as bare wood, it will still be effective, so just keep that in mind. All right, so I drilled almost all the holes in. The reason why I didn't do it all on camera is it takes up a lot of time and it's very boring and well you didn't miss anything interesting. I didn't do any crazy backflips or anything or jump through a flaming hoop of fire. None of that fancy stuff. So I got two more left. Where are they? One, two. So I'm gonna do it right here on screen so you can see the last two. Like I said, you didn't miss much and you probably now see why I didn't do it all on camera. And you're probably wondering why, John, why did you add all those holes to add nails in when you just hammer and nail in wood, you just hammer it right in. Well, it makes it a lot easier. If I were to hammer this in right now, it would still grip it. It would, because it's not, it's not like it goes in easily. It's, can't, I can't even get it in when I'm pushing my thumb in it. But it will go in easy enough with a hammer that it will go in and it won't come out. So that is something that you should do if you are going to add little nails or little impact points. And you're probably wondering if I, if you were to add nails, what nails would you use? Well, these I believe are five eighths. Don't use any nails that are too long, like one inch. Go for something less than one inch, like half an inch or three fourths or five eighths. These are five eighths rose head nails that I got online. They're a little more expensive than your average nail, but I like them a little more because they have an old antique, old school look to them and not so modern. So if you wanna make it look old, I would go for rose head nails, but it's up to you. You can choose what nails you wanna use. You can even add spikes in it as well. So it's all, optional. All right, next thing, fire. What we're going to do, or you don't have to do this. This is optional. I like doing it. It adds a little color to it. You can torch this and it will kind of dark, it, it will darken the wood and it will also make it harder. I usually do this on a lot of my uh, wood weapons because it makes it look a lot cooler. But you don't have to do this. And it can be very dangerous. So this is something I recommend you do not do. Unless you know how to use a propane tank, not a propane tank, a blowtorch. So what you're going to want to do, 
I'm standing far away because I don't want to burn the camera. So. As you can see, as I'm hitting it with the blowtorch, I'm slowly spinning it. You don't want to go in one spot. You want to go around evenly. And you're going to want to do this not just with the head, but with the whole handle. The whole handle you want to do this with. Ooh, smoking. And the same thing on the handle. Still a little hot. And same thing on the handle. And as you can clearly see, I didn't just stay focused on one spot. I kind of just went, kind of, every time I hand the blowtorch, it went just all the way down. I didn't want to go too far because I didn't want to burn my hand. So when this is a little bit cooler, when this is a little bit cooler, I'll go more down. And I'm going to basically do this whole thing little by little. And don't make, make sure you don't burn it or you don't overcook it. Uh, you just want a nice light coat. And All right. So after you evenly torch it, as you can see, I did everything. And again, nothing special. You, you didn't miss anything great or just me blow torching it. And you can see it's much darker. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take some light sandpaper. You can use 400 or 600. They have numbers on the back of them. And based on the number, is 600 is very light. 400 is a little bit heavier. I recommend something between 400 or 600. And you're going to want to wet sand it. So take your sandpaper. Get it wet very evenly just start sanding it I usually do this in the sink but the sink is way over there and you won't be able to see me do it so I was nice enough to get a bucket and put it in front of you and go the extra mile just so you guys can clearly see how to do it but you don't need a bucket you just need a sink so don't use your mom's nice sink use the I guess you call it dirty sink or the sink for work but if you don't have a nice sink or no, if you have a nice sink and if you don't have a, you know, let's just say a work sink, just use a bucket then. But like I said, it does get a little messy. So you just basically take it and you spin it and you want to make sure you keep it wet. And what this is doing is you're basically making it more even and just see how I'm kind of turning it a little and I'm going long. And keeping it wet, you don't want to keep it dry. But you don't want to overdo it. You want to make sure it's nice and damn. You want to make sure it's nice and even, but you don't want to remove the. Uh, I guess you call it the coloring. You're gonna to want to do the same thing. You're gonna to want to take a rag. I'm just gonna to want to. Just drag it across. You want to kind of put pressure in it a little. You don't want to do it gently because you want the color to you want the color to stain into the wood. You don't want to wipe the color off. You want to kind of push it in a little. And you do the same thing. Let it dry. You gotta let it dry now. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stain it, but do not stain it while the wood is wet. Gotta let the wood dry. Could be an hour, two hours, whatever how long it takes for it to be dry. So do not rush this part. Let it be 100% dry. Because if you do stain it while it's wet, it kind of messes with it a little. So just be patient on that part. All right, uh, I made a mistake. Um, it's actually not called staining. We're actually gonna add clear coat or clearing, not a staining my mistake but you wanna before we do that as we're waiting for it to dry because it's still a little wet I'm gonna actually uh, glue it in here so it's glued on so this will be drying this will be drying and the glue will be drying so I can stain not stain it clear it as one continuous piece 
So you're going to want to use... You're going to want to use wood glue. Any wood glue is good, just some wood glue. And you're basically just going to want to pour it in. Don't add too much because I, I done this before if you add too much and when you go and you put this in the glue just like a volcano goes all, o all over the place and you have a big mess and you waste your glue so you don't have to go too crazy because this is going to take up a lot of space but you don't want to make sure you get too little because then it won't be a strong bond go all around the edges And I don't think I added enough glue. Ooh. Oh man, the glue came everywhere. Alright, let's try adding a little bit of glue. All around the handle as you can see. And then you just stick it and you twist it. Oh no. It's like doing the volcano thing as well, trying to avoid did the volcano thing. Just comes out everywhere. Ah. Well, you know what they say, do as I say, not as I do. Oh, man. If you do get the stupid volcano thing where it just comes out everywhere, just do this. Oh. Take a wet rag. As you can see, it's kind of messy, and I don't like that. So I'm going to take a, a damp rag and just go all the way around. Make it a little more, whoops, get off the camera. Spin it. Get some of that glue off. And it's a lot nicer. I let it dry and it's 100% dry. The, uh, it's not wet anymore. The only thing that is a little wet is the glue in here. It's mostly dry, but I kind of want to get this done as soon as I can. So I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. It's, like I said, this is really dry and that was more important than this. But like I said, it's like maybe 90% dry, good enough. So I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to use a type of clearing on it. What the clearing will do is, well, it will make it look nice and shiny and it will also protect it from water damage or from the elements or anything else. So you take your rag and you dip it in. And you just start smearing. And it depends how sick your clearing is. Some clear coat is very watery. Some is more syrup-like. If you have this syrup-like one, you're not going to need that many coats. You'll probably need one to two coats, I'd say, if it's really sick. If it's thin or watery, you might want maybe four or five coats because it's so thin. But because this is a little bit thicker, I'm probably gonna do two coats, uh, maybe three, but I think I'm just gonna do two. And you wanna go all the way around. You don't wanna miss any spots. Also, I recommend wearing gloves. My hands are getting a little uh, sticky and this stuff is um, kind of hard to get off your hands. It's not impossible. It's like getting really sticky syrup all over your hand and it's not very fun to get off or easy, I'll say. Also, make sure that when you uh, do the clearing, you don't hold it with your hand. You use a, a vise. Okay, the vice holds it and you're going to want to use two pieces of wood and a rag so you don't damage or pressurize the handle too much you don't want to damage it so i recommend having a vice all right so as you can see it's been uh, colored and it's been clear coated as you can see right here it's a lot shinier and what that clearing will do is it will protect it from rain or other forms of elements which is something i recommend that you do so it doesn't get ruined and you can also see I just put in the nails. I wouldn't start by adding these holes. I would just 
like I said earlier, just the blank ball will be fine. And you're probably wondering how I hammered these nails in. Basically, put on my towel. I used a piece of wood, and I used my wood to hammer it in. I hammered it in the holes with my wood, and the reason why I did that is because I didn't want to ruin the wood. If you use a metal hammer, you can actually put um, indents in the wood if you miss. All right, the final step is to add a grip handle. I'm gonna use something uh, just as good, cord. This isn't nylon cord, it's, I want to be as traditional as possible, so this is actually um, like a type of cloth. You can use leather as well, but I recommend not using vinyl or plastic, just something a little more traditional if you want to keep that authentic look. You can also use grip tape as well, like cloth tape or I don't know what they call it, baseball bat tape that they put around the handles. You can use that. It's a lot easier to do, and I guess you could do it if you're new at it, but I, I, I like this. This is a lot better, and I'm going to show you how to put this on, but it's very difficult, and you're going to see me uh, struggle trying to put this thing on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I want my handle to start and end. Obviously, it's going to end at the end, but where I want it to start, I'm guessing somewhere right around here. I don't want too high, but I don't want it too low. You want a nice hand grip. You want to be able to move your hand, but you're clearly not going to need all this. It's just not necessary. So right here is good. And you take this rope or cord, and you go down it long ways. Like I said earlier, this is very difficult. Well, for me it is. And you take it and you wrap it around. Like this. I'm doing the best I can, but you can see that's how it is. And you just start spinning it. Well, make sure it's really tight. It was a little loose and I had to tighten it. And you just start spinning with a lot of pressure. And this part can hurt your hands a little because you're putting a lot of pressure so it doesn't loosen up. And you just keep doing that. You just keep spinning around this guy. If you can see, it's tucked in, this is out, you just keep spinning round and round and round till you get to the end. So as you can see, I got the handle on and it's nice and tight. I left a little extra slack here, or a lot of slack here and just a little bit here. And what I'm going to do is, I drilled a hole right there, I'm going to nail this in there, and this will wrap around here like that so I have a place to put my hand in so no one can take my weapon out of my hand while I'm using it or just as a way of putting it on my belt so I'm gonna nail it in with this little nail right here I also forgot to mention that before you do any of that you can see right here I tied a double knot and double knot kind of stops it from unraveling so Make sure you do a double knot right here before you do the wrap around. And now it's in there, and it's in there quite well. So you'll see. So now as you can see, I got a loop. I can put my hand in here and I can hold it. If someone tries to take my weapon out of my hand, nope, they can stay in my hand and I can continue using it. And as you can now tell, it's done. Now we're going to give it a strength test. Now that everything is on, we're going to give it a good strength test. And 
and I don't care what my mate does to the log, I care what the log does to my mate. Put my protection on, now we're going to test it. Survive the strength test. The best part about this mace, it was very easy to make and I made it out of things I found at home very easily. Crochet ball, crochet ball, pole handle, and some cotton lace. Something that you can easily find in your house. That's the end of this video. Please make sure you like the video, you share the video with your friends, you subscribe, and you also follow me on Reddit and Instagram. And if you want, you can post your own videos and your own images of what you made on my community. And you want to know, who knows, maybe you did a better job than me. I want to see what you made. So please make sure you post what you made on my community. I'm going to leave you the information at the end of this video on how to do it.